I will reveal the fastest and easiest way to write your next research paper for a Q1 journal in just a week and without any fancy AI tools and completely ethically. And I'll also give you a proven secret blueprint that just in the last year and a half resulted in 48 published papers in Scopus Index journals. But before I show you exactly how to finish your next paper in the next seven days and give you the proven blueprint, you need to understand the two main reasons why most researchers and PhD students really take months to finish one paper even after all the data has been collected and analyzed. First, most researchers lack a plan. They write in fits and starts at random hours in random places, fighting off constant distractions and interruptions, struggling to find the time to focus on writing the papers. And the second reason why most researchers take months to finish any paper is that most researchers approach writing a new paper as if it was a completely new paper that needed a completely new structure. As a result, they waste a lot of time and effort organizing their ideas and thoughts and looking for the best ways to express them. This leads to a situation where you either hope that time for writing papers will spontaneously appear on your schedule, and when you do finally carve out that time to work on your paper, your mind feels scattered, overwhelmed, you're staring at a blank piece of paper, unable to really express your research ideas precisely and concisely. Only to realize that you've just wasted the last precious hour that you had this this week to work on your paper. So weeks and then months pass by like this without you finishing, let alone publishing any papers. So here's how we can fix this issue. The first crucial thing that you need to do if you want to write your research paper for a Q1 journal in just a week is to plan and focus. So before I give you that secret blueprint that in the last year and a half resulted in 47 published papers in Scopus Index journals, we need to tackle the first culprit, why it takes so many researchers such a long time to finish a paper. And that culprit is a lack of plan and a lack of focus. Preparing lectures, supervising students, fighting for grant money, faculty meetings, admin work, answering emails, your schedule is full to the brim with everything but time for writing papers. And when you find that precious time to work on your paper, a colleague might come in to chat. An important email pops up on your screen. You just remember you forgot to prepare tomorrow's lecture. No wonder finishing just one paper can take several months. That's why if you really want to finish a paper in the next seven days, you need to redefine how you manage your time. The simple truth is that if you don't control how you spend your time, someone or something else will control it for you with their own best interests in mind. In other words, you will become a time puppet forever dancing to the I'm too busy motto. Instead, you need to become a time puppeteer who intentionally schedules the daily, weekly, monthly agenda with your own best interests in mind. So what I need you to do right now is to open your work calendar on Google or Outlook, wherever your work calendar lives. Then you're going to block four hours each day for the next seven days, either in one nice four hour slot or in two two hour slots. Personally, I prefer the former so that I have more time and longer uninterrupted time to really get stuck in writing my paper. And preferably, this should also be in the morning. Why? Because the longer in the day you wait with writing your paper, the more tired your brain will be and the more difficult it will be for you to write your papers efficiently. Now, what if I can't find those four hours daily for the next seven days to finish my paper? Well, the first thing that I will say, just to be really blunt, if you can't find that time, well, there's no way you will ever write your next paper in the next seven days, nor will you ever be able to publish papers regularly in top journals. That's why if this is a top priority for you, you really need to redefine how you approach your schedule and how you manage your time. If publishing papers regularly in Q1 journals is your priority, and I'm assuming it is because otherwise you wouldn't be watching this video or other videos on this channel, then it should take precedence over everything else. Together with getting grants, which also involves writing by the way, publishing papers is probably the single biggest lever that you can pull to move your academic career forward and finally become the go-to authority that you want to become and get that desired tenure. And your schedule should reflect the importance of that writing task. So look over the next month or even the next couple of months and start eliminating things from your schedule that are not your priority. 
And if they can't be eliminated, minimize them. For example, you could only have supervision meetings with your PhD students once a week for two hours in total. Or you could answer emails once every two days for 30 minutes. So unless writing papers becomes a scheduled event in your calendar, no magic template, AI tool or fancy new strategy will ever work. You will forever be locked in that treadmill of busy academic work, working 60 or more hours every week, but publishing barely a paper in a Q1 journal a year. So pause this video and make sure you block time for writing your paper in your calendar. So now that you've got your time blocked off for writing in your calendar, you might sit down at your desk, open the Word document and that blank page in Word keeps on staring at you mockingly. Minutes pass by as you struggle to structure your research ideas. You write and rewrite the same sentence or paragraph multiple times, never quite content with what you've got there. An hour or two pass by and you barely have a paragraph which you aren't even too happy about. But writing papers doesn't have to look like this, it doesn't have to be so painful. In fact, it can be quite smooth and fast if you follow a proven template. You see, every paper in every discipline follows a very predictable pattern and a predictable structure. What's more, the same or very similar language is used to express very similar ideas in each of the different elements of that paper. And this allows you to create a blueprint or a template which will make writing each following papers infinitely easier and faster. Because you'll never have to wonder how to structure your research ideas or how to express them. The only thing you will need to do is to add new content, but the structure and language remains the same for each following paper. So here's what this blueprint looks like. Now, what you will need to do, of course, is adjust it to the particular journal where you want to publish or to your particular field more broadly. And this will involve some initial work and some time spent, but this is the best time investment that you can make because then you will be using that same blueprint to write three to five papers every single year for the next 10, 20, maybe even 30 years of your research career. So if you think how many hours this is going to save you over the next 10 or 30 years of your career, investing two or three hours right now to adjust this blueprint for your particular field is the best time investment you can make right now. So the first thing that you will have to do in order to adjust this blueprint is to check the overall length of an empirical paper in your field. So what I want you to do now is look up papers on a similar topic that the one that you're writing on, similar type of paper in a similar journal, download five of those and check what is the overall length so that you can adjust the average length in here. And then once you've done it, you want to look at those five papers as well and then look at big sections in this blueprint. So we've got introduction, literature review, theoretical framework, methodology, results, discussion and conclusion. And you want to see if all of these sections appear on average in your papers and if they appear in the same order and if they have the same length. Because what often happens in certain disciplines is that there is no separate literature review section, but the literature review is included in the introduction. In other disciplines, such as medicine, it's very common to have discussion and conclusion as one section. So now you can pause the video and make these adjustments to the blueprint as well. And then once you've done it, what you want to do is look more specifically at you know each of the biggest sections and focus on the smaller elements of each of those sections in here. Right? And you want to take a look, for example, if we look at the introduction, in your discipline, the five papers that you've downloaded, they typically start with the importance of the topic, and then they go to brief literature review, research gap, research aim, the main contributions and structure of the paper. Do they do that? Or is some of the elements typically missing? Or maybe they come in a different order. So you want to do that for all of the big sections in here. And then what you want to do finally is add the useful language to this blueprint. So essentially, if the first element of the introduction typically in your field is to express the importance of the topic, maybe for the society or for your discipline in general or as an unresolved problem. How do the researchers do that? What are some typical phrases that you can notice in the papers that you can basically copy and paste? And you want to do that for each element of the paper in here. So then you not only have a proven structure, but you also have the language that you need in order to express your research ideas. Now, if you want this blueprint completely for free, 
you can go to our free published researcher community. The link is right in the description. And then you will head here to research paper blueprint and you will find the link to the blueprint attached just here in the comments section. Now, these two hacks will allow you to write your next research paper in as little as a week. But of course, we also want your paper to be accepted. However, Q1 journals can reject 80 or even 90% of submitted papers, according to Springer. And that's why in this next video, I'll show you exactly how to write your papers better than 90% of other researchers. So watch this video next. And if you give me 14 minutes, I'm confident that your papers will be accepted in Q1 journals.